Hi, I'm Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a taste test on a tree ripened black sapote fruit. I'm also going to look at some mangoes, some other fruit trees. So I'm standing in front of a Venus mango right now, and it is covered in fruit. <clears throat> Still has powdery mildew on it, which doesn't affect fruit set here thankfully, and it's just amazing how much fruit is on this, little tiny fruits is on this tree, but this tree always produces a lot of fruit. And here's a sugarloaf mango that is just starting to flower on some of its new growth, which is what this is, and um, has a little bit of flower on on it still that's just uh, now dying off but it's got good fruit set also this is a sugarloaf tree that actually has fruit developing directly on the branches rather than the tips of the tree like right there come right on the, the trunk of the tree uh, flowers all down the the, uh, the branches and the trunk very strange. I thought they only flowered on the tips, but that's obviously not true. And probably has something to do with the fact that it uh, has been blooming for four months and finally set fruit. So uh, it's going to be a good mango year. Here's a little sun-grown uh, Noclea folia. Noclea latifolia, the African peach. Um, it's unaffected by the drought. You can see how dry it is here. The grass is beginning to look like California. It's like this is a lemongrass. It's all dried up from it, but the heliconias don't seem affected by it and the ginger seems fine. Here's a sweet tart tree that has flower or fruit all over it, little fruits. Lots of fruit. It's going to be a good mango year. So our mangoes, we get really good fruit set depending on how much uh, zebu manure we've uh, given them. So these trees up here, which are a lot bigger than some of our other trees, have been getting more zebu manure than uh, a lot of our other trees. Got wood storks in our pond, which is almost dried up. I might as well look at them very quickly. Maybe they're still there. There's a little coconut tree that a friend of mine, Tim, gave me uh, that he found at the beach. <clears throat> so here's that sweet tart tree. Sweet tart's an excellent mango. They're unaffected by uh, drought stress, the mangoes. I haven't noticed that they're affected by, uh, fruit set is not affected by uh, watering and um, they're just unaffected by a drought. And here's a jackfruit tree. Somebody wanted seeds from the, this uh, fruit. I just picked a fruit of this. I still have not opened the fruit. This fruit actually looks like it should be taken off. It doesn't look like it's gonna form, but there's still a couple more fruit on it. So our pond is quite low. Last winter, this dried up completely. It's got wood storks in it and other birds trying to eat my little frogs that are still in there. It's pure quicksand, this pond, <clears throat> when it gets like this. So anyway, I just wanted to show the wood storks. The Kwaimaka is really doing well. The vegetable garden, even without watering it, is still hanging in there, which is surprising. Got quite a bit of good squash off of our, uh, our uh, veg from our vegetable garden this year. Uh, multiple types of squash. Those are the radishes I didn't pick, and you know, there's the Russian kale, and the mustard and stuff is still there. So I'm gonna move on. I wish we would get some rain because it is a little scary, but 
<clears throat> it doesn't seem like anything's hurting that badly. Look at the heliconias look great during this uh, drought. I forget which one it is, but it is just a stunning flower. <clears throat> Looks nice and lush over here. <clears throat> it's very dry though. Very, very, very dry. The citrus doesn't seem to mind the, the lack of water. Uh, this is that pomelo, that, a seed grown pomelo that uh, flowered this year, year for the first time, but it did not hold any of the fruit. And the star fruit obviously is losing some of its leaves. That's from drought. But the tops, the tips of the branches are all perfectly fine. It's nothing to worry about. People tend to get frightened. But I've been doing this here for so long that I know what to expect. And uh, I definitely don't expect plants to die because they're not being watered. Uh, I just am able to see my little seedlings. This is a Garcinia acuminata growing in full sun. And here's a Garcinia dulcis, seed grown. Uh, it looks great. Those are new leaves it's put out during this drought. Totally unaffected by the drought. There is a citrus over here that's a seedling. This is what uh, trees do during drought. Uh, those leaves, that's from drought, but they're not falling off. They're not turning yellow. They're just shutting off their respiration and conserving water. And yes, it would like some water, but it makes a stronger plant. It makes the plant so that, it, you know, when it is hit by floods or drought, it's able to withstand uh, the, the abiotic stress. And it makes it signaling uh, abilities uh, and its uh, cellular uh, mitochondrial function uh, work better. So it's much like fasting in humans, intermittent fasting, uh, and uh, it's nothing to worry about. Here's a jackfruit seedling that definitely wants some water, but ain't gonna get it. Here's a Quimac seedling that has been flowering. And <clears throat> I found that Quimac, Quimac, whatever it's called, uh, it's, uh, uh, Articarpus parvus used to be Articarpus hypergyrus, but now it's Articarpus parvus. Uh, the Quimac, uh, we have two fruiting trees, and this one uh, has produced one solitary fruit two, uh, two years ago. And last year it did not flower, uh, but we had a severe drought uh, on two seasons in 2022 and 23. So uh, that, I feel, was why it did not uh, set fruit, but it looks like it's going to um, hopefully set some fruit this year. Our grafted tree is loaded with fruits. Uh, first time it's done that. This is a uh, star apple that has shed a lot of leaves that were damaged by the uh, winter cold this year, uh, meaning they had little spots on them, little black uh, uh, like dead spots on the leaves uh, and it shed all those leaves and now it's hanging on to it uh, so these little spots that were covered all over them like this um, it's doing okay it's fine <clears throat> fine I'm not fooled by uh, drought stress in plants and fruit trees <clears throat> any longer uh, the first few years I was experimenting, uh, dry farming, uh, we would get a little scared. In fact, we got so scared, my partner put in this uh, flow well. So it's an artesian source of water that is done with PVC, polyvinyl chloride, which obviously would uh, put uh, microplastics directly into the system. And uh, it's a well, so... It, Sure, it's an unlimited source of 60 gallon per minute water, but basically unlimited. 
uh, free flowing and uh, but and supposedly not that polluted, but um, it's unnecessary. And I found that the pH was way too high because it's calcium carbonate water, infused water, which is good sometimes, but these uh, tropical fruit trees and like acidic soils. So it would change the rhizosphere of the plant and it ended up killing about a uh, hundred uh, Rolinia trees and our bananas were getting uh, fungal issues. And I've noticed my bananas don't, are unaffected by the drought. I mean, they look, none of them are dying, none of them are turning brown. Uh, they all look great. The heliconias, which are water loving plants, are unaffected by the drought and Really, it's nothing to worry about. In fact, they're not even showing any type of drought stress, uh, but they form relationships with fungi. I know that because when I do have done chop and drop of the heliconia, uh, fungi sprout out of the, the uh, dead, you know, uh, fruiting bodies of fungi sprout out of the dead uh, plant material that's on the ground. So I know that they form uh, fungal relationships and uh, fungi does provide large quantities of water and nutrients to plants. So that's what we focus on is the uh, health of our soil here. And we try to stay off the system and not disturb anything. And uh, we don't do mulch, but we do aspects of mulch. So you see lots of dead palm fronds and leaves and stuff. And then all these dead little twigs and stuff. Uh, that are still uh, attached to roots below ground, which are probably also dead. So all that dead plant material below ground is carbon directly in the soil, which holds a certain amount of water also. So there's a reason to this uh, chaotic madness of that nature provides us here. And uh, I got a uh, lots of rare little plants. My uh, mulberries have been uh, cuttings are doing good. They're starting to send new uh, buds off. There's the Achachiro tree. Um, and uh, my friend Scott is coming by this morning and he gave me this little uh, mocha coffee tree. <clears throat> and we have a Tilicia melococcus oliviformis right there. It looks good. I watched this great YouTube video today in, from Brazil on the uh, Plutonia insignis, the Bakuri tree. And it looks like an excellent fruit. There's a Cupia bractiosa, it looks good. Looks very similar to the uh, <clears throat> Plutonia insignis, but it's not, so. I saw a video where I planted it. <laughs> I was like, is that a Plutonia? No. Um, here's my seedlings of my cacao. These are the seedlings that started coming up four days after I planted them. And as you can see, they're still just tiny little uh, seedlings with the seeds still attached to them. So. Uh, if you bought see, uh, trees from me of those, please uh, give them time. Give, like they've been in the they've been in that this pot for four weeks. So uh, this is my uh, uh, Theobroma bicolor that I got from Fruit Lovers Nursery. I do not see them coming up. And this is a pot of cacao that is was planted at the same time and. This is the what, the uh, cacao that was coming up four weeks ago, and it still hasn't popped out, but it showed that it was germinating, but it hasn't, so. Yeah, you know, drought, though, is not really like California, because look at it here. It looks like I've been watering, but I don't water, and it's uh, it looks very lush and green, so it's nothing to worry about here. Uh, but if you have overstory, that does make a difference. Shade does make a difference. Here's our cacao tree that I've been getting lots of fruit off of. Uh, and yeah, it, it's dropping all these leaves, but it does this every year during drought at the end of late spring or end of spring. Some of this cacao just 
is not going to be big enough, even though I bet it has viable seeds in this little tiny pod. But uh, I've got so many uh, cacao off here that I have so many seeds started, I really, uh, it's okay. I'm just going to uh, put the uh, fruit down in the soil. <clears throat> Maybe my friend Scott will want one today, so we'll see. Here's a pl uh, African peach, the Nakli latifolia, that's growing in full shade. It's actually a quite large tree. It's sprawling. Uh, it's more... Uh, <coughs> more over uh, spread out. You could see it down here. I should go over there and look at that Plutonia insignis. Here's another citrus that uh, really looks uh, affected by the the uh, the drought, but there's a, a rose apple. There's some more of those heliconias. I really like the heliconias. They're just really pretty uh, uh, flowers. The ginger seems unaffected by the drought. Spider web. I see that this uh, Anthurium waterburyanum uh, cross with the Waraquianum, I think that's who this is. I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Uh, it's got a new leaf coming out. It looks really good. <clears throat> really good. The little cacao in here, some are still all green, whereas some have dead leaves on them. Uh, some are like mixed, but they're all gonna be fine. Uh, I'm showing this so that in, uh, there's one that has like dropped all its leaves. There's an Achachiro. The Garcinias are totally unaffected by drought. There's a Garcinia dulcis here. This guy's a Garcinia dulcis looks bigger than that other one in full sun uh, now. It didn't before, but uh, it certainly looks uh, larger to me. It's finally surpassed uh, that uh, Garcinia uh, dulcis in full sun. Here's a Garcinia mangostana. Garcinias, they definitely seem impervious to uh, drought, uh, like zero uh, issues with uh, dry farming Garcinias in Florida here. <clears throat> I'm going to look at some of those Garcinias that have fruit on them just so I can. So I talked about the Plutonia insignis tree, so I thought I'd show it. It looks a little different than that other tree. It's right here. So it looks like a good fruit, bakuri. I watched this uh, video on uh, grafting it this morning. It's a little achachiro tree. That's why we started this farm was for the achachiro. The air smells so good here. So amazingly good and a lot of it is this, right now, is these big... Uh, see all the flowers on that tree? That's why the uh, monkey ear tree or the guanacaste tree, the state tree of uh, Costa Rica. Here's a achachira tree. But it just permeates the air with like honey smell. It's so nice. There's the achachira. My ubaje looks a little drought stressed but I know it's gonna be fine. The, so the grass has kind of died off over here. It's dying off over here. The pathway is definitely very California looking. <clears throat> That's why you don't mow. Uh, it compacts the soil and moisture can't uh, get stored in long roots. So, cause moisture binds with carbon in the soil. So if you have 10 inches of roots, you have like a lot more water in the soil with the carbon than you have with two inch deep roots in compacted soil. Here's a male uh, Garcinia hombromiana tree. It looks fine. I'm gonna look at the Garcinia madruno and then work my way over to that uh, 
black sapote fruit. Hopefully that black sapote uh, fruit tasting is going to go as planned. I expect it to be ultra sweet. Uh, the tree ripened black sapote I've had in the past has been ultra sweet. So hopefully that will be the case today and give people uh, reason to leave their fruit because most people have them in their home gardens. We just happen to be a farm, though this basically is my home garden. Uh, it is my home garden and uh, it's just a lot. It's, it's a big home garden. So this is the uh, Ursinia madruno tree. Totally unaffected by the drought. This is in full sun. Sure, there's a tree above it, but uh, it gets full sun. It was planted in full sun and maybe at noon it doesn't get full sun. It gets dappled sunlight, but there's a lot of fruit on there. Little fruit, big fruit. Uh, little fruits. Garcinia madruno. It's a very expensive fruit. I don't suggest anybody buy this fruit for the cost of the fruit. It's just, I love the tree, but it's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it. The price that they charge. Uh, just buy the seeds and grow it yourself and then you'll see when you uh, get it to fruit. It fruits fairly small. That tree started fruiting it like two feet tall. Unless you really love sour fruit and it's kind of dry. It's it's good. It can be good sized depending on the time of year and how much rain we get. Uh, uh, we'll uh, decide that the, uh, the size of the fruit um, meaning the first big crop that's on there now is usually the best, biggest fruit. And then as the time wears on in like November, the fruit will be kind of small and sparse. Here's Garcinia brasiliensis, which can get sweet uh, if you leave it on the tree long enough. Sweeter, it still has a, a tart component to it, but you can eat it skin and all, whereas the Garcinia madruno, it just stays uh, sour. They have a sweet version of that called the Garcinia, of the Madruno called the Garcinia Acuminata, which is the bumpy lemon. It's it's a round fruit, not a lemon shaped fruit like the uh, Madruno. So uh, we're growing that too. I showed it in the little seedling there. Here's the Garcinia Gardneriana, which can get sweet. Uh, it's got little fruit on it. The fruit can get quite large. I believe this is the one Adam calls at Flying Fox Fruits calls a superior lemon drop. That's the Garcinia Gardneriana. Um, I don't know if it's superior. I like the Brasiliensis the best personally. Uh, it's sure it's not the biggest, but it's uh, though I did have a fruit off this two, two days ago and it was the very sweet. So this is the Garcinia celebica and it's loaded with fruit and the fruit's kind of getting big. Uh, I'm so excited for this. Garcinia celebica, Garcinia uh, hombromiana, the seashore mangosteen. Just all these different names on the Garcinia trees. But this fruit, this tree has quite a bit of fruit on it. And uh, as you can see, I didn't realize it had all this fruit over here. And I see that it was flowering up here. I'm sure there's fruit, yeah, there's fruit up here. Um, so uh, hopefully all goes well. It doesn't seem like it's affected by the drought to me. Uh, these black sapote trees, they lose their older leaves during times of drought, but the new leaves are there and it's flowering. So uh, I don't see an issue with the drought with the black sapote. Whereas when we first started this, those are grafted uh, nursery bought trees. We were, that's the tree that scared us the most. They looked like they were gonna die. And we fell into the belief that they couldn't handle the drought and uh, nothing can be further from the truth. So they are totally drought tolerant. It just depends on how dependent your tree becomes on water. If it's dependent on its water from the microbial life and the carbon in the soil, then your tree could, can handle drought stress. But if it's dependent on water from you turning the water on, then it probably can't. <clears throat>
I believe people have water issues and that their trees will die. And it also depends on where you're growing. If you're growing down in Miami and you're on rock, pure rock, it's probably have an issue growing like this. So it's, it's location has a lot to do with it. <clears throat> we have a lot of carbon in our soil due to these old growth oak trees. I mean, this is a huge, giant, old growth laurel oak tree that's just massive. And uh, it's very healthy. It wasn't always the case, but this particular one is, is probably uh, one of the oldest trees on our property. We have, uh, I think, one, two, three, four of these ancient uh, giant old trees here, the oak trees. So this Garcinia humbromiana male tree, it looks like it is under a little drought stress, but it's the only one directly next, uh, surrounded by a mowed path, which definitely affects it. But it also has bloom on it. So um, it's not opening, it's waiting for some rain, but it's, I mean, it just looks a little tired to me is all, but it's not dropping leaves. It's already dropped its old leaves. Uh, there's our mulch, you know, the leaves that fall on the ground is, is our mulch. So here's a Garcinia Livingstonii right here that uh, is a female tree. So these jackfruits definitely are under drought stress, but they seem fine. That has flowers on it still. This little uh, grafted jackfruit tree has a fruit on it, uh, I can see. But dropped all these older leaves, but I see fruit on it. Fruit looks fine. This tree has flowers on it. Uh, and uh, it's a seedling tree. It's totally fine. Uh, this is uh, the, the uh, Garcinia Livingstonii. Boy, it, it's definitely unaffected by drought. This is a female tree. It's a uh, monoecious female uh tree meaning you don't need a pollinator for it there's a male tree but it wasn't flowering when that was flowering so i i, I really don't think that it's uh, been pollinated by the male flower the random uh garcinia livingstonia i can uh set uh set fruit a, a couple of fruit on a male tr Garcinia tree, male Garcinia Livingstonia. This is a, a uh, orange crushed jackfruit. Got fruit on it, got flower on it. Got lots of flower on it. This thing's been flowering for a long time. This fruit looks like it might not be, uh, looks like it's turning brown. So that could be from the drought, but it's got all these flowers here. It's not, dropped a lot of leaves it's dropped some leaves but it's just got so much fruit on there that uh, i'm sure it's going to be fine <laughs> which way should i go which way should i go i think i will go this way and i'll look at some sugar apples real quick since there's they seem to be having their moment there's a sapodilla that's got fruit on it a hazia it looks good there's a sapodilla that needs to get bigger before it fruits. Here's some mangoes. I put a lot of manure around this one, or daily compost, I call it. Look at all that fruit. Lots of fruit on this tree. Same with this tree. Oh, I can't wait for mango season. It's going to be so late this year. Normally we'd be uh, like ready to pick fruit right now, but uh, not this year. So here's our sugar apples, our row of sugar apples down here. I just showed those. These are my uh, monthly farm update. What an unpopular video part two was. Kind of surprised me. Maybe it was just too long, but... <clears throat> they sh people sure liked my for sale by owner one, which I don't know what that's about, uh, but, you know, uh, I really doubt that we'll get anybody interested in buying this property. It's just too, 
uh, extreme uh, type of gardening for uh, my age group that has the money to afford something like this. Uh, they want their uh, mowed lawn and their specimen trees, even though it causes uh, soil subsidence and compaction. And uh, they don't want all the wildlife and the weeds and the bugs that come with a system like this, nor the rats or the raccoons or the possums that live in a system like this. But that's what I want. And uh, it's not listed with an agent for a reason because we're not that desperate to sell. We don't, you know, I didn't expect it to get an offer. And uh, I was just kind of surprised that the videos were uh, viewed so many times. <clears throat> I guess maybe I should do real estate videos. Here's a um, orange sherbet mango. It's got a lot of fruit on it. Look at that droop of fruit. Wow. This is how our ice cream mangoes do it too. I mean, look at that. That's too many fruit for that little branch. Hopefully they will drop off or I'll pick some off because it's just way too many fruit. I love orange sherbet, but the uh, sugar apples look really good along here. They're really looking uh, swell. Sugar apples, atamoyas, elamas, you name it, they're in here. Uh, there's more black sapote. There's a uh, uh, super julie tree that has a lot of fruit on it. And there's a black sapote, and here's a longan tree. Sugar cane's looking good. The raccoons ate all my old sugar cane, and this is all new sugar cane growing up from the, the base of the old sugar canes. This uh, giant guava, uh, Ruby Supreme uh, nursery bought tree, it's suffering in the drought. Uh, normally it would have flowers all over it right now and be blooming, but it's suffering from drought. It's not gonna die. It's fine. This is a, uh, just doesn't look very good. This is a, a big giant uh, achachura tree that's not big and giant, but it's getting close to fruiting size. Maybe next year it will uh, produce fruit, possibly, I bet. Uh, the bananas, we got 450 ice cream bananas and uh, they seem like totally unaffected by uh, the drought. Uh, this is a small rack. I removed the pups from these bananas that I could get to easily. Uh, and when you do that, you wind up with small racks, especially if you dry farm like us. So this one, I removed all the pups and it's going to have a little banana rack on it. <clears throat> I removed uh, some of the pups off this one and it has bananas on it. That one up there, I did not remove the pups on. It has a good rack on it. That's totally what it is for the rack size for here when you dry farm. But that's how we got up to 450 bananas, but they're able to handle the drought. This is one I just planted. This is one I pulled off this past winter to get up to 450. There's a, a, a mango. Here's a, a cutting of a world's best mulberry here. They seem to not mind the drought at all. I have a little uh, cutting of a torch, uh, yeah, no, torch ginger, yeah, at Lingera, right there. And it's uh, doing good. There's a little cashew seedling in here. And then I have little plants. I see a curry plant right there and uh, little mangoes. Here's another jackfruit. This is a grafted tree. It got it got froze uh, uh, two years ago during our 31 degrees. This is like the only one that was really affected by it of our grafted trees. And I was kind of surprised to see it start flowering, but it's got flowers on it and uh, it seems okay. So here's that uh, black sapote fruit I was talking about. Uh, this tree is uh, covered in flowers right now and it's been fruiting for the last six months and it's flowering now so I wanted to see because I found that uh, tree ripened black sapote uh, is super sweet and delicious and I wanted to show it in a video um, and uh, so I, I saw the other day that this fruit was 
uh, soft and uh, I knew it could last two days. This is the dent I put in it when I saw. So I'm gonna pick it right now and I'm gonna see if this fruit is uh, sweet and delicious. I'm sure it's going to be. Um, and I, I've eaten the skin when they're at this point and uh, but I'm gonna try to take it off while I'm filming here and um, such good fruit, uh, such good fruit. I don't want to waste any. My hands are gonna get messy. See, this is a this is a two. I need an assistant for this, but here it is. Okay. Please let it be sweet and delicious, like a mango. So it's you know it's just like pudding. It really is. So let me show my face because I know I always like to see people's faces when they're eating the fruit. And oh my God. It's like so sweet. It's unbelievably sweet. It is unbelievably sweet. Um, the chocolate pudding fruit. Uh, this is why I do this because people just don't talk about this. They just say it's a mediocre fruit and it's not that good. And a bowl, this is like, uh, I put it right up there with mangoes, sapodillas. Uh, it's so delicious and sweet. It is like 20 times the sweetness of a regular sapodilla. The sapodillas are being picked too soon. That's what's wrong. It's not the fruit. So I could have picked this fruit like two months ago, but I left it on the tree because I, I saw that when you tree ripen them, they're delicious. Uh -huh. Oh my God. It's so sweet. It's like definitely... If you have a home orchard, <laughs> it's so messy. It's just like chocolate. I mean, it's as sweet as a candy bar. Mm. I mean, you know it's good if I'm like not throwing it on the ground. And there's no seeds in it. Oh, it's so good. I hate to even do that. I want to eat the skin and all. Um, but it's just too messy. But look at that. I mean, it's so, so thick and uh, chocolatey. It's just good thing I washed my hands after I uh, messed with the cows. But it's so, I mean, look at that. Mm. Oh, my God. This is just unbelievable. black sapote. Uh, that's a messy fruit. But oh, it's so good. It's as good as a mango. I know that's hard to believe, but huh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I made a mess. Uh, but it's as good as a freaking mango. That's just so delicious it's unbelievable so i saw another one over here and where is it um so this is how i suggest people uh with home gardens wait to pick their black sapote fruit don't pick them when they uh, lift off wait until they get soft on the tree if you like sweet fruit if you don't like sweet fruit then don't bother but We've been picking them all wrong. And they stay on the tree. Here's one. They stay on the tree uh, until they get soft. See? That's how you know it's ready to be picked. And then it's super sweet. Super sweet. Um, we have a lot of fruit left on this tree. I'm glad I waited to do this video and didn't pick all the fruit. This is the first year I've done this with this fruit, even though we've been growing them for eight eight years here. Uh, I've been growing them continuously in Florida for more than 13 years. So um, uh, why it took me 13 years to figure this out, <laughs> I don't know, but 
I'm glad I did. And I look forward to uh, eating all the rest of the black zapote and getting the fruit off this tree that is like, looks like it's gonna be loaded with fruit. Lots of fruit, such a good fruit, such a a fruit that was is was so misunderstood and disparaged by so many people. It's as sweet as a white sapote or sweeter that I've had, and definitely probably I don't know. It has something in it that you crave. I'm not sure what that is. It's the thickness and the the texture of the fruit and I'm a texture person so it really is like it's the it's the chocolate pudding you don't even have to add honey it's like it is definitely the chocolate pudding fruit named correctly not miscorrectly so all that information that people say that it's a mediocre fruit don't bother it's just wrong it's just they don't know when to pick it nobody's nobody's talked about this before that I know of so uh, that's why I do these videos. So this is a mango that froze two years ago. It's a sweet tart tree. And it's got little fruit. It's a tiny little tree. Um, hopefully I got all the chocolate off my face. Uh, black sapote off my face. Um, but <sighs> that's the black sapote. And boy, what a top tier fruit it is. Uh, I'm standing in front of a Miko lemon right here. They're looking good. We got lots of fruit all over them. And the trees are really looking good. I gave them some daily compost. Um, and uh, now I have to see how many fruit I have on this black sapote. I have a black beauty black sapote uh, too. There's quite a bit of fruit left on it. I'm so glad I did not pick them. Anyway, this is Eric. Uh, Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and sorry if I have chocolate on my face. I just ate a black sapote, the chocolate pudding fruit. What an amazing fruit. It's sweet. It's as sweet as a mango. It's as sweet as a sapodillo. It's as sweet as a white sapote. This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Have an excellent day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Please leave a comment. I love hearing from you. I learned so much from you people. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.